What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Nerd Tuesday Poker Podcast. I'm your host, Ida Hoagie. Uh, Brian, not the man Keen. He will actually be on a future podcast with another interview, but I had an early interview today, so I said I don't want to miss this one because my good friend Dan Double Down J Hens in the house. Uh, so I was like, you know what, Dan, stop over for a little bit. Let's do it. Let's do a podcast. I want to get you on the show. I want to talk about what's going on. I know you got a lot of things happening. Uh, for everyone at home, thank you for following. Make sure you check out all our channels, our audio, our video, YouTube, uh, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, literally everything you can find the word nerd enthusiast attached to some social media. Check out all the cool stuff. We put up different memes, different images. So if you're following one thing, you're going to see different fun content there than another. So a lot of fun stuff going on every day. We have new content up every day, not just poker. We have wrestling, videos, movies, uh, gaming, sneakers. I don't know. Literally everything under the sun now is nerd enthusiast. Uh, but obviously I do the poker stuff. So without further ado, uh, welcome. Daniel oh James. yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Good to be here. Thank you. Thanks so, for the invite brother. So Dan, here's how I can describe Dan. Dan, you are like a traveling world. I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know. Like you just love like a, a wonder fever. You just have, you, you find new things. You adapt to a different environments very easily and, learn the culture and kind of adapt and find out new stuff and then he comes home and he tells me all these cool stories of shit he's got going on in the world and i'm like man that's cool but then along the way you play poker kind of like kind of float your bankroll and yeah go yeah. as well so i was like you know what dan's a great guy to have on the podcast uh so always try, try to keep a little aside for poker you know yeah uh my wife wants to buy something it's <laughs> like you got this money set aside i'm like no 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 i don't no. <laughs> that's my poker bankroll that's money. poker roll that's different that doesn't count as real money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's separate. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, we've been traveling all over, man. We were in Hawaii. Yeah. We so, lived there for about five, six years, and then uh, came back here, and we just moved to Colorado so about I 20 wanna, minutes from the mountains. So. I wanna, Yeah, so I was going to bring that up. You're in Colorado. You came back, and what I'm bring up today is the PokerStar <clears> stuff. <throat> you came back, and you just jumped into this PokerStar Live. Now, unfortunately, you did not win the tournament. But I want to kind of talk about this because if you guys don't know at home, uh, PokerStars uh, does what's called a Platinum Pass. Platinum Pass is basically uh, a tournament prize package that puts you into their poker championship event in January every year, the Bahamas. It's a $25,000 super high roller buy-in. It's, it's absolutely epic. But they go around the world, not even just the country of U.S., but the world, and they do tournaments, and they throw in bonuses where they say, you know, if you win this little tournament, we're going to throw in a $30,000 package, which is going to include your $25,000 buy-in. It also includes your, um, you know, flight, hotel, travel money, the whole nine, some swag along the way. But recently... Uh, a couple places here around the Northeast, they started doing these and they were, they were the only thing I would bad say is they were last minute. They kind of put them out within the last 30 days. Uh, yeah. So there wasn't a lot of time, but I knew you were coming home. You said you wanted to jump into it and I wanted to kind of see how it went with that. But so recently they just had it at Philadelphia, the live, cause it's called live, uh, live Philadelphia casino. They had it at their poker room and that's the one Dan played in. So it was a multi-day flight. It was only like three. What was the, what was the buy-in? Uh, 360 was the buy-in. Yeah, so for 360 now, bucks, and then as you're playing it, you still get the cash prizes if you cash. Right. But first place was an additional, on top of the prize package, $30,000 package, man. Where people like, so what was the environment? Let's start with that. How was it? There was a lot of people there. What was the feel? I couldn't make there, it, unfortunately. There was a good amount of people. Um, I got there about right on time. It started off with about, I'd say, around 150 buy-ins. And... Uh, I'd say by level six or seven, it looked like it was up at like 300 buy-ins. Um, and there's a multi-day flight. So there, every yeah, day yeah. there was that many buy-ins going on. So there was probably a couple thousand by the end it was done. I didn't see the actual reports. Right. I started on Thursday. There was two on Thursday. Mm -hmm. One that started at 11, one that started at six. I think Friday was the same and Saturday was another flight. And then the uh, kind of... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Coagulation know. of them all? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the final day was Sunday. Oh, yeah, yeah. So everybody that made it through those flights, they uh, got together on Sunday and played it all through. Well, but, so, yeah, how, sadly, so, I, I didn't make it. But how, how was, I had a good run. So good how run. was the dealers there? Like, did they have enough room for everyone? Was it too packed? Was there a huge waiting list? Because I've heard complaints about that before, that they've had a huge waiting lists to get into the games. No, yeah. Smooth. Not really a waiting list. They, they ran it pretty smoothly. Nice. Um yeah, Poker Stars was there. They were giving out a bunch of swag. Uh, apparently, they were gonna have a whole film crew and all that too. I did see but, some uh, stuff on Twitter. They did post some pictures and stuff like that. So look, 
pretty professional. Yeah. Um, how was the vibe there? Was it pretty... See a picture of me like... <laughs> <laughs> and there's Dan leaving the yeah. hotel and casino. Thanks for coming, yeah. sir. Picture of me in the walk of shame. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, it was a pretty smooth, uh, smoothly run tournament. They had a lot of dealers come in from, uh, I think it was Maryland. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, where because yeah. it, it was packed. Okay. It was packed, yeah. It, That's what I was curious, where amount. they brought the dealers. Because they also ran a similar tournament down in Maryland a week or two prior. So that's what I was curious if that's what they were going to do, which makes a lot of sense. Um, I just wish personally, my only kind of complaint my end was that if I wish they put out further notice, it was so shorthanded. It was. Because yeah. uh, I remember talking to you, like, yeah, I'm coming up from Colorado. We were talking about the tournament, and it was like literally like two weeks ago yeah. that it, was, it finally came together. You know, for me and a lot of like recreational players, like, you know, you have to take days off from work. You got to. Right, right. You got to be able to plan that. You got wife, you got kids. You right. got to plan this stuff. You can't be like. Not you know, only plan it, but you have to plan for the best. Because yeah. if it's a multi flight, it's not just one day. Yeah, yeah. You have to go in with a good frame of mind like, okay, I'm going to make it to this next day. So am I going to be able to have time off? Yeah, the so you got to have. Yeah, to you got to have two days yeah. clearing your schedule completely. Like, you no. know, not like we're going to the pumpkin patch with the kids on Sunday. Like, I'm playing for $30,000. Okay? Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You that's know, that's what makes it tricky, yeah. Juggling all that. You got to make sure your sure. days are clear for sure. So the vibe there was it cool? Like, how were people were people talking about the the twenty five thousand dollar pass? Like, were people hyped up about it? Like, were the well, I, pass? I mean, people were definitely hyped up about it. You know, you could you could feel the uh, the electricity and the. Uh, that's what I, I don't mean, know yeah. the the greed and the the <laughs> hopes <laughs> in, <laughs> in the air. But uh, yeah, everybody seemed to take it pretty seriously. Uh, but you know. A lot of times you go to Philly for like cash games. There's, you know, you've been to Philly cash games, bickering and and <laughs> such, you know. But um, no, everybody was was pretty good, man. There, there it was a nice crowd. Um, no bickering, no, no, not not that I experienced or saw. Uh, the dealers ran it pretty well. Um, cool. Yeah, just had some some wild people. You yeah. know. Like, yeah, well, yeah. How's some the action? some guys that were or? ready with like five barrels. So you that's know? what I. That that's was, the thing. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing too. Because I mean, look, <clears throat> you look at it like this, like such a prestigious thing. So you're, oh, yeah, there's all this yeah. overlay basically because there's thirty thousand dollars extra in the pot, you know. And I was that was the one thing that was in my, my head. You're gonna have dudes going there with like, you know, two grand in their pocket, ready to fire all oh, yeah. six, seven bullets they got in their pocket. Yeah, yeah. You know, and there was that. Yeah, yeah. That. That, I think, is one of the things you got. So, you know, and they don't want to cap the entries because they got to pay back most of that money they're trying to raise. They're trying to at least break even on that 30000 if they possibly can. Or I don't know how the breakdown works with the casino and stuff like that. But, yeah, I, that's the only thing I was worried about because, you know, the style of play, you're going to have to pick and choose, like, if you're going to be firing multiple bullets or you're going to be that kind of wild guy or you're going to go in there just tight, try to double up on one of these idiots, you know, going maniac mode. So it's kind of the pick, the choice you have to deal with now they are doing another one um at the end of this month i don't know by the time they hear the podcast it might already be going on it's actually gonna be in pittsburgh live which i was actually just mm -hmm. at uh with uh joe samara we took a ride out to pittsburgh i'm gonna do a uh, whole video segment on that in the future but that program is super small and they said no, they're not gonna do it in here they have like a little conference area but the the one in philadelphia they did in the poker room right yeah yeah it, it was, was actually, right yeah, yeah right in the poker room yeah but yeah. it's kind of uh, they've they've got some gates around it, you know, so it's not really mixed in with the with the cash games. Okay, so it was but, kind of um, pushed back to the back there. Yeah, but, yeah there I... there was definitely some maniacs there, you know. When you when you're looking at a you know a satellite tournament on top of winning cash for a twenty five thousand dollar buy into another tournament, that's, which is that's, like that's you know, pretty big. I mean, it, the World Series of Poker is ten grand, right? Yeah, yeah. So this tournament in the Bahamas is a twenty five thousand dollar entry. It's pretty big. It's yeah. in my opinion That's a game changer. So they yeah. did this before COVID and then COVID screwed everything up with the <laughs> platinum passes. But I, I think realistically, uh after this year and the, you know, they're gonna continue it, besides the main event, that twenty five thousand dollar high roller at the poker championships down in Bahamas for uh poker stars, I could see this being exclusively like the number two biggest event in the world going yeah. forward like this yeah. will be the this will you'll have your summer main event and you're gonna have your winter like this is gonna be number two because it's just the platinum pass and the whole idea behind it you know it's just kind of like the everyday joe has a chance to get into this tournament oh yeah you know i think what's gonna make it explode there now there's a lot of high rollers that play the platinum pass i mean they play the actual event the twenty five thousand fine you know they pay for out of pocket or their backers or whatever i think what's gonna make it explode is that if one of these like local dudes that 
put in 300 bucks, won the 25 grand, wins one of these events for a couple mil, it's going to be the next moneymaker effect for the poker stars. Yeah, right. The next peak of the, yes. the poker world. Yeah, yeah. 100%. So that uh, peak was what back in oh like six or oh, something oh three like? oh think, three yeah, yeah, the yeah. effect uh, took yeah. off but yeah I I could see that happen with this poker stars event plus I mean I've never been to it it's a real big fun event I watch all the videos it's all my bucket list to go down there and play because they do have smaller events they do have like a five hundred a thousand dollar event they have other events but that's like one of the highlights of the twenty five thousand oh, event yeah. obviously uh, but it's a whole huge like thing down there. It's like a big party. You're at the beach in January. You yeah, know, like right, right. it's yeah. a big event. So yeah. we got to make it our bucket list to go down there, Dan. We got to make it on there. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I know you got some swag for me, but you didn't bring it, so we can't show that off to you guys, unfortunately. Oh yeah, I got but, some Poker Star swag T-shirts, but hats, and they were giving away some stuff. cool stuff. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they're giving out a whole bunch of stuff. 